Here is another example of convergent plate movement. One plate pushing against another. The Indian continent is moving. It is a separate plate. The Indian plate is slowly being pushed down under the Eurasian plate. Indian crust is being destroyed, while the Eurasian crust is being lifted, creating the Himalayan mountains. The Indian plate movement is a good example of subduction. In a subduction zone, the area where the plate that is being pushed down there is a lot of friction as the rock slides against other rocks. It gets so hot it starts to melt, forming metamorphic rock. Then, as it is pushed deeper down, metamorphic rock is destroyed and melted and changed into magma. Some of this magma flows out of volcanoes creating new mountains. In the subduction zone, we also see a trench forming here and mountains being created here. Mountain building and crust destruction happen at convergent plate boundaries. The plate that is pushed down then starts to fuel volcanic activity using the crust from subduction that eventually turns to magma that will be used to build new mountains. This is part of a cycle that geologists call the rock cycle. Here is an example of transform margins. The Arabian plate is moving this way, see the arrows? They tell you that the boundaries are moving in the opposite direction. The Gulf of Aqaba was formed by transform plate movement. It goes up through Lebanon and into Turkey. You can see these valleys. It is an earthquake zone. To review, there are three types of plate movement at plate margins or boundaries. Divergent, which causes the plates to move in the opposite direction, this creates holes in the crust that is filled in by volcanic activity, creating new crust. Convergent, which pushes the two plate margins together, causing one side to be lifted, making mountains, and the others to be pushed down into the subduction zone that destroys crust. Transform causes the plate margins to move sideways. This is where you get violent earthquakes, but crust is neither created nor destroyed. We have looked at the theory of how the Earth was formed. Now we're going to discuss the theory of how petroleum is made and accumulated. In this lecture, we are going to talk about types of rocks. In the rock cycle, we have three classifications of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. We identify these rocks according to rock type. Of course, the UAE has all three classifications, but in this course, we will focus on the sedimentary rock because only in that rock, oil is found. We can further divide sedimentary rock into additional types, carbonate, which is limestone, and silicate, which is sandstone. Carbonate rock was formed by chemical composition when the layers that were laid down to form sedimentary rock contained remains of living things like shells and coral. Here is an example of carbonate rock called limestone in the UAE. Silicate or sandstone was formed when the layers that were laid down contained silicate particles of varying sizes. Around Liwa you can see examples of sandstone. In the UAE most of the oil is found in limestone. Here is an animation of the rock cycle. We start with magma from erupting volcanoes that comes to the surface, cools or solidifies into igneous rock that over time forms mountains. The igneous rocks in the mountains are exposed to the wind and water which begins to break down the rock. This is called weathering. Over geological time, these particles are transported by the same wind and water to another location. This is called erosion. Eventually, these particles and pieces of rock settle in a quiet place like the bottom of the ocean where they accumulate into sedimentary layers. As the layers increase, the pressure and temperature increases on the lower layers causing lithification. 
a transformation from sedimentary particles into sedimentary rock. Lithification can be formed by compaction, which is a physical process, and by cementation, which is a chemical process, a chemical change within the physical process. Remember, sedimentary rock can be transformed by these three processes, physically, or chemically, or a combination of both. Meanwhile, as the plates at the margin continue to move, because they are dynamic, always moving, some of the sedimentary rock is pushed down by convergent plate movement. When this subduction, which is when one plate pushing down under another occurs, the rock is pushed closer to the mantle. All that friction of rock pushing and rubbing against each other causes a lot of heat. This heat changes the minerals into different shapes and combinations, creating metamorphic rock. Then, because some of this metamorphic rock is pushed further down, it gets so hot it melts forming new magma and the rock cycle starts over. Igneous is mostly crystallized or cooled parts of magma. Sedimentary is weathered and eroded igneous rock deposits that have formed layers, been buried, put under heat and pressure, and lithified, physically, chemically, or both. Finally, metamorphic rock is formed when the plate margin movements causes rock to be pushed down and transformed. As I said before, in the oil industry, we care mostly about sedimentary rock because that is where the oil is, where we find the hydrocarbons. The presence of hydrocarbons in sedimentary rock is why we search for this type of rock. But the oil industry is not the only one interested in sedimentary rock. It is in this rock that we find all our minerals. We find gypsum used in the building trades. We find gold, silver, and copper used in all kinds of manufacturing as well as jewelry. The phosphates fuel the petrochemical industry. In this rock, we also find salts, a mineral needed for us to sustain life. Therefore, sedimentary rock is essential to us in our way of life, giving it tremendous economic value. This is pretty impressive for a rock, don't you think? Here is a chart showing the composition of sedimentary rock. As you can see, most of it is siltstone, mudstone, and shale. These other two, the two important ones, are limestone and sandstone. These are the two that contain most of the oil, where the oil reservoirs are found. Sandstone is generally more important in the United States, Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico. Limestone is common here in the UAE. They have very little oil producing sandstone. Now let's go back to the rock cycle for just a moment. We saw the molten rock appear as magma that is then cooled into igneous rock. It was exposed to weathering and over time broke down, causing it to crack and separate. Erosion next moves these cracked and separated particles away to some other place, causing them to get separated into smaller and smaller particles. These particles eventually are deposited on the bottom of the ocean into sedimentary layers. As the sedimentary layers are lithified, they form into sedimentary rock in two different ways. Some are transformed by deposits, which is a physical change, which we call deposition, chemical change, which we call precipitation. In the physical change, sedimentary layers are piled on top of other layers until they are squeezed, compacted, and turned into rock. Within this physical change, you can also get a chemical change called cementation. This is where grains in the rock mix with water, causing them to bond or cement together. Do not confuse this with precipitation, which is also a chemical change. In precipitation change, or chemical change, particles are actually formed. In carbonates, for example, particles are formed when carbonic acid plus calcium ions are mixed with ocean water. Depending on temperature, they solidify back into solids, precipitating out of solution and forming layers of sedimentary rock.